fight some post jujitsu mental clarity vlog. So today I posted about how I feel after I roll, and it's a more of a mental thing. Of course, my body's exhausted. I'm tired. I'm sweaty. Body's a little achy. Maybe some joints a little bit fired up, but mentally, I'm clear, focused relaxed, calm, and it's a feeling that only those who train will understand. And it's a feeling that I'll, I will continue chasing after and it'll keep bringing me to the mats. So I've got a little bit of a drive home, about 15 minutes, and I wanted to throw on the video and chat a little bit about you know, either how the training session went or a topic that I've posted about on my Instagram, go a little more in depth on what I think and just take advantage of that mental clarity and that calm, focused period after training. So one of my first quote posts that I posted about was kind of a summary of how I look at my training and really my life in general. And it's the, the idea of relentlessly pursuing better. And I try to think of what to, to talk about. And I try to summarize why I'm always chasing that edge. And I read a book a long time ago called The Slight Edge. And it talked about small things repeated over and over and over again. Compounded over weeks, months, years make something huge. So when I'm pursuing this jiu-jitsu path or jiu-jitsu journey, I'm always tweaking and adjusting, trying to get the absolute most out of my training, out of my nutrition, recovery, and pursuing just a little bit better every day. And I talk about in the quote, kind of the three main things to me what relentlessly pursuing better means. And one is, is always questioning why you're doing something. Why are you rolling a certain way? Why are you focused on a certain thing? Why are you eating this way? Why are you structuring your life in a certain way? Why are you lifting? Why are you really anything questioning why you're doing it? And if you can't really come up with a really good answer on this is why I'm doing it, maybe you should question why you're even doing it, especially if it's relating to your goals in the long term. And that's a kind of second aspect I talk about, questioning if it, the thing you're doing is helping or hindering your future goals. Is slamming a bunch of fast food when you get home at night after training really doing a lot for your recovery? Or is it just kind of canceling out all that work you did on the mats? Is chasing your absolute strongest deadlift in the gym really going to make you that much better on the mats? Or is it potentially going to injure you and get you off the mats? So when I'm relentlessly pursuing better, I'm always questioning things and I'm questioning why I'm doing it and if it's getting me closer or pulling me away from my goals. You're either really getting better or getting worse. I don't feel like we're ever in a standstill. And I'm always trying to put money in the bank every single day, making small deposits every single day. And I'm not gonna notice that much of a progress, especially now that I'm into my purple belt. I'm not gonna notice a ton of progress after a couple weeks or even even a couple months sometimes. But every once in a while I feel that, kind of that level up and all that work you put in before that with questioning why I'm doing something and if it's hit helping or hindering my goals, I can feel that increase. And then the final thing that helps me relentlessly pursue better is just being brutally honest with myself. Am I working hard enough? Am I recovering hard enough? Am I focused enough on the mats? Am I journaling as best as I can? Am I eating the way that will nourish and help me recover for future training sessions? Am I trying to roll with 
harder and harder people? Am I putting myself in bad situations? Am I working on my weaknesses on the mat? And sometimes it's tough to be brutally honest with yourself. Sometimes I justify things, you know, justify pushing a training session back or justify taking a round off or justify rolling with someone that maybe not pushes me as hard. But if I'm honest with myself, it'll continue to move me towards my goals. And Jocko talks about being on the path. And we all know what that path is. We all know what it looks like. We all know where it's at. And relentlessly pursuing better, to me, is constantly finding ways back on the path. But even on times of where maybe you're injured or you ate like shit for a couple days or you're not focused in training or you kind of lose, lose track on what you're working on or maybe you've got some family stuff going on and you can't get to the mats, you still can relentlessly pursue better. It's about doing what you can. And I know injuries are inevitable. I know time off's inevitable. I know work, family, it's all gonna get in the way. But that doesn't mean I can't relentlessly pursue better. And that sometimes means watching video, or doing mental reps. Sometimes that means taking that time to really recover and rest. Appreciate the time that you had on the mats and develop a game plan when you come back. Dial in your nutrition. There's tons of ways to relentlessly pursue better. I think another aspect of relentlessly pursuing better is knowing when to pull back and knowing when to push. You know, sometimes always pursuing better means to dial it down. You know, if I had if I had two or three really hard training sessions, like you know, maybe one at Alliance where I'm, I'm, I'm going against you know, high-level black belts and then right into some, some scrappy blue belts at the base, and then. You know, maybe I hit wrestling class on Thursday and then the go roll with the Savages at Gracie Baja. And, and Saturday may look like, you know, a flow roll day. Look like a, a day where, you know, I, I, don't, I don't go as hard. I don't, I don't hit eight rounds in a row. And that's okay. In the grand scheme of things, you're going to have up and down days. But that relentlessly pursuing better and everything you do will keep that average line going up. If you look at day-to-day -day progress, it's up and down, up and down, up and down, but that progression line, that overall progress, you zoom out, is always trending upwards. Like a, an example specifically for my jiu-jitsu of that mindset and motivation of always relentlessly pursuing better is me falling into solo dribbles. And it was kind of a schedule thing where I noticed that I train for three or four days on my weekends and then I go back to work for four days. And I feel like it took me a day or two to kind of get my bearings back, to feel better, kind of to feel that movement. And I was tired of having to almost restart so what I did was I bought home mats and I started researching solo drills. That way I could get the type of movement middle of my work week so that when I came back and trained for class on my weekend, I wouldn't feel as rusty. I found guys like Matt Edgerton and his solo drills that helped a ton. I, I, I bought solo drill programs Google, YouTube, and sort of developing this kind of categories of solo drills. And I would hammer those at least once a week on during my work week. Thousands of shrimps, thousands of inverting Grammy rolls and wrestling shots and sprawls. And I didn't immediately feel the positive effects but after a few months I started progressing really fast on the mats and 
and that small change just once a week about an hour of solo drilling in the morning before work has made a huge impact on my progression and still to this day I'm hitting solo drills staying fresh getting a little good sweat in during my work week sharing what's helped me and adding and taking away certain drills I like so I think that's a good example of me relentlessly pursuing better adding something small but making a huge difference three and a half years later as I feel like I move well for a group of all, as far as jiu-jitsu movements go. So be that guy, be that gal, be that person who people look at and say, damn, they get after it. They are always pursuing better.